for a lot of up and coming okay. artists um, okay. used to get started in uh, Dragon Magazine, which should show just how old I am. <laughs> Looks like we're live. We are. Awesome. <laughs> I hear destruction. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you hearing destruction from? Are you hearing me? We are hearing you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold on. That was probably my son going. And... That, that's my son going to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm muting now. Sorry. I thought it was a Lego village going down. That's what I that's what I was putting money on. So <laughs> you are live now, by the way. All right. Uh, just sending out a quick message. So uh, what from all over the world here. Yes. Um, first off, I want to thank you. Thank everybody for coming in. Um, well, coming in and spending time with us remotely because it's 2020 and well, <laughs> anybody who's been living through it, we all know. <laughs> and uh, if you guys would like to go around and introduce yourself, starting with uh, William, I'm just kind of going from my left. All right, I'm William McCausland. I'm a freelance illustrator. I mainly work in the, the RPG industry and my main client is Goodman Games these days. I also illustrate my own product line um, the Mutant Epoch role-playing game and Fantasy Clip Banks and a few other things on the go. And I'm based out of Camelot's British Columbia where CamCon is being hosted from. All right, uh, Beatrice. Uh, hi, I'm Beatrice. I'm from Italy. Uh, so sorry for my English. I didn't have the chance to speak English for a while now, so I'm a bit rusty, but your English you can. is awesome, Beatrice. <laughs> no, thank you. Anyway, I am a freelance artist too. I work mainly in uh, RPG uh, publications as uh, Pathfinder and Starfinder and uh, other um, smaller uh, third party publishers, and also for some uh, European uh, industries, yes, like uh, Panini. I don't know if you know it. Here. No. Uh, anyway, no, something perfect. like trading card games. Yes, yeah. something like that. Okay. And that's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Hamad. So my name is Hamad, and um, I'm based in Bahrain in the, in the Middle East. And I'm a, I'm a newbie. I'm just breaking into the uh, industry, one, one would hope, anyway. <laughs> so I've worked with uh, the likes of Pickle Dragon, people who create. Uh, you know, third-party content for Dungeons and Dragons. And hopefully, uh, I've got you know. Hopefully, some things will line up with DCC as well, which I'm really excited about. And um, yeah, and uh, you know, being an artist in the Middle East, it's uh, it poses a sort of a completely, perhaps, different set of challenges than um, you know what I expect my peers to actually share with us later. But it's been exciting times, and I'd be happy to share these experiences with you. All right, and Echo. Hi, my name is Echo Chernik. Uh, I've been an advertising illustrator for about 28 years now, and I've also been in the role-playing industry for about 28 years now as well. Um, on, the, on the gaming side of things, I uh, started playing role-playing games back in college, and I've just, even though I've had a, a big career as an advertising illustrator, I just can't seem to get out of it. So early in the day, I did a lot of work for White Wolf um, on Wraith and Mage, and uh, lately I've done a lot of work for Shadowrun, just because I love Shadowrun, so we... Uh, play Shadowrun still and uh, do a lot of do a lot of um, illustrations for it. And I also have been working uh, most recently on a lot of my own pieces as well. All right. Um, so here's kind of the big question, which is how did you kind of break into the RPG field? Um, William. Well, I set out actually to be an author or fiction author. And I had this wild idea that if I was good enough to illustrate my own books um, from what I was seeing with the Dungeons and Dragons um, adventures that we were playing through high school, um, I figured maybe I'd have a better shot of getting picked up one by one of the big five publishers. 
And then I just got picked up one day for um, pool cue art by a company out of Bellingham. And I didn't even know illustration was really a thing. And, and until I, the internet came along, it was really hard to do anything like that remotely from a small town like Kamloops. Um, I don't know, I don't know how I got into it. I just started sending out uh, portfolios through email and started working with Joseph Goodman. And 19 years later, here I am. So you just kind of stumbled into it. Kind of, yeah. I love it. I've, I've always been an artist, though, but I just, I did a lot of commercial illustration, architectural work and um, indie publishing, book covers and stuff. But um, RPG art is where my, my heart is. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I know that can actually be one of the tougher areas to kind of break into. Mm -hmm. um, because I know I've, I've had friends that have tried for years, mind you, you know, they started back um, trying to get into D&D, &D, like as their first client. And yeah. I, I say, you know, it's kind of like trying to join like a Fortune 500 company um, without a resume, uh, where if you can kind of prove hey, this is my portfolio, this is who I worked with in the past, they might give you a better shot uh, mm -hmm. than just coming up and saying, hey, I've never worked for anybody in a commercial sense, um, but I really want to work on Dungeons and Dragons, which is probably one of the most famous licenses out there. Uh, it's, it, it can be tough to get in the door. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about you, Beatrice? How did you kind of? Um, I studied fashion design uh, in the high school. And honestly, I didn't know uh, what RPG was before uh, I decided to get in. But um, when I picked up my school, uh, in Italy, we didn't really um, know much about this world. We had some niche that played, but it's it exploded much uh, more later on uh, after uh, nerd uh, culture become a bit more uh, popular and mainstream. So uh, at my early at my early studies, I didn't really know what to do, but I know I, I knew. <laughs> sorry, I I love to draw characters uh, every. I muted myself. <laughs> uh, I used to paint character every day, so fashion design seems the good choice for me at that time, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't my field at all. So I started to work uh, in a bookshop and then I discovered it there. I discovered a book uh, with the illustration, the, the rules, and I understood that it was a work. Someone was doing that as a job. So I started to learn things about that. And then uh, it was a bit of a, uh, Mm, it, it was a path of uh, trial and error. So you put out your things, you send your portfolio, and uh, maybe you, want, as you said, you want to work for uh, D&D or Pathfinder mm, and other big industries, but you don't have the skills yet, maybe. But trying to do that, trying to build stuff that uh, fit the product or try to, uh, was the thing that... Uh, that brought to me clients, maybe smaller clients that couldn't afford uh, the, the main, the biggest yeah. artist, but it was how I started. And then uh, day by day, work by work, uh, I, I'm here. I'm still pretty a newbie too, because it's, uh, I'm doing this since uh, 2013. So it's, it's not much. Uh, I'm still <laughs> exploring, <laughs> but yes, that's, that's how I, I got in. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you know, especially in the digital era, I think the world is kind of changing as to how artists get their word out there about themselves. Um, you know, working with smaller clients and even being in the tech field, like the best I can relate to this is me being in the tech industry is, you know, you start with the smaller clients and then word of mouth gradually builds. And, you know, next thing you know, you're doing illustrations for like Pathfinder or D&D &D or, 
my dad used to call it paying your dues. And also, if yeah. I can add, when I talk about smaller clients, I don't say it in in a diminishing no, no, term. Absolutely. Yes, it's just the possibility yeah. of the company, and that's. But I found the very lovely people and work that yeah. product that I loved. So uh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, you know, smaller smaller clients. Nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with a smaller yeah. client. Um, a lot of times, you get to work a lot more closely with the design team or something like that along uh, in the smaller settings where, you know, if you're working for Wizards of the Coast, for example, you could have like maybe two or three tiers between you and the actual designers. And, you know, you're going through an art director um, who then talks to someone and someone and someone. So, you know, it gives you a bit more one-on-one -on -one communication. The only difference being, I guess, would be like the budget. Yes. because let's face it Hasbro has more money than well most small countries um, yeah okay Hamad well uh, I actually come from the financial sector so I spent about 17 years kind of toiling away um, in, in that industry and um, it, it's, it's the kind of work that kind of goes home with you. So I always found that I never really had time for art while I was working in that sector. And then, you know, I used to doodle and, you know, I call it doodling, but, you know, I used to try and draw as much as I could. But about three years ago, I um, actually made a deliberate decision. I, I, I cashed out. I left that industry and I decided, you know what, I'm going to focus on things that make me happy and things that I love to do. And I enrolled in uh, CGMA in their 2D program to sort of uh, just go through an intensive program, bring my art back up to speed to what it was basically in my younger years and uh, hopefully better. And from there, it's kind of like, I knew I wanted to be, you know, a participant in this industry that I love so much. I love tabletop gaming. I've been a gamer for like well over 30 years of my life. And, um, and I actually had a very active role in introducing a lot of people here in this part of the world to tabletop gaming. And, you know, just sort of, I, I used to literally run the games in Arabic. I mean, I translate them and, and just sort of run them in, in our mother tongue here. Um, but what happened over time is that, you know, I kind of started joining groups, if you will, um, on social media. I, I never really applied for a large company like Wizards of the Coast or things like that. But there's this, um, I don't know, maybe it's my own mental barrier, if you will, or something like that. But I, you know, it's, it just felt too huge, you know, to try and sort of go for it. Maybe mm -hmm. I feel I need to be a better artist before I can even attempt that. I don't know. But um, what I found is that where I kind of clicked with with people, where people that are equally passionate hobbyists as I was uh, in the industry. And so that's what I meant when I said, you know, kind of like third party publishers or third party authors. These are guys that are doing stuff for themselves. Um, my art is very inspired by, of course, early days, Dungeons and Dragons, first edition, your Errol Otis's, of course, and, uh, you know, um, Second Dead, but also the fighting fantasy and lone wolf game books. I just love those ink illustrations. And that's what sang to me. That's the style or the medium that kind of sang to me. And that became more, I just said, you know what? hunker down on that and just focus on that. And by joining these groups and just being friendly with, with everybody, some people sort of took notice and they asked for my portfolio and then they started routing work my way. And I've been just working with these, uh, you know, uh, basically passionate, wonderful people uh, that have given me an opportunity to actually express my art, you know, through their, through their medium of choice, be it a game book or, a, you know, a role-playing game. Yeah. Um... All right. Um, before we get on to Echo, um, I just want to make sure that Mr. Easley has arrived and can hear us. Oh, and he disconnected. <laughs> All right. It's a start. <laughs> he appeared. That's a good sign. All right. Well, so just I interrupt me if you need to, if you need to okay. uh, introduce him or whatever. Just okay. Because um, I can I can talk so. <laughs> okay. um, how did you kind of land in the RPG uh, and tabletop gaming? Well, I, I went to school. I went to I went to school for illustration. Uh, I went to school at Pratt um, many many moons ago, um, and I went for illustration, just knowing that I wanted to be an illustrator. I enjoyed uh, creating art, but I also know I I enjoyed actually illustrating things as opposed to fine art, and the difference is creating. Uh, 
you know, Im Ill, uh, images that tell a story as opposed to just, you know, beautiful pieces of artwork. And so, uh, so I went to, you know, went to school for that. And then I, I was play I met my husband in, in college and he started off, uh, he started me off playing um, Shadowrun. Um, I'd play D&D in high school, um, but I started off playing Shadowrun and we played the entire, the entire um, year, time I was in college. And I knew senior year, I, I, this is before email, by the way, to make myself really, really old. But um, I knew senior year that I wanted to be an illustrator and I wanted to be working when I got out of college and hell or high water, this is what I was going to do. It was, you know, I didn't want to have to go get a job somewhere else to support myself. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do role playing games because I know I can, I can probably get a job in that and I can, um, um, do that how I while I figure out how to get into advertising illustration and so I spent my entire senior year studying all the different forms of black and white art um, because that's what they were in at that time was black and white so I learned uh, pen and ink and zip tone and and studying all the different illustrators of the time and old illustrators and new illustrators and do it you know just working on like a, a wide variety until I settled on my own style so it took me about a year of, of school to do that and uh, during our senior survey which is like our senior portfolio review where they hang everything up uh one of the art directors from white wolf was there um he contacted me and um oh boy was i pretty excited <laughs> that, was, that was pretty awesome that was the bomb and i was like oh my god i have 14 illustrations and it ran right off to the game store and and i uh, went to pick up uh white wolf so i could read all about it and everything and then there was a cool looking guy hanging out there also looking at the white wolf stuff and i'm like hey i'm gonna be doing illustrations for that you want to pose for me he's like yeah and that turned out to be sean jaffe by the way who's oh. a game developer now and uh mm -hmm. so anyway sean and his brother ended up posing for me for my early work in White Wolf. Um, and that's sort of how I got into it. And so I did that for uh, years. And then um, to support ourselves, we started, uh, I ended up doing um, web design as well during the beginning of the, uh, the whole web boom, which was kind of cool. Uh, and then ultimately I got illustration um, based on my role playing work. I had about 500 illustrations by then. I got mainstream advertising work from then. Um, got into that, which is great because it pays much better. Um, but I still love it. So um, I, I wanted, I still wanted to, uh, to work for, uh, for Shadowrun because I'd love, I played Shadowrun in college and I tried to get into Shadowrun when I was uh, back in college, but I, I wasn't able to. Um, so I just sent, uh, sent them an email and said, Hey, you know, I, I know my style looks like nothing like what you want, but um, you know, would you consider it? They're like, Oh my God. Yes. And so we ended up, I now I've done like I don't know, 11 or 12 covers for them. And, uh, and I do the illustration, I do the, um, the role-playing projects that I want to do. So regardless of if it's a big project or a small project, if I want to do it, it interests me. I just work it around the advertising work, which is nice because it, it means I can like, you know, I can do the advertising work, which pays the bills. And then I can do the fun stuff, which is the RPG stuff, which is yeah. hard to make a living solely on that just because it's, um, you know, it's, it's challenging. So Yeah, sometimes you, you got to put the rent uh, and the food before the fun stuff uh, it's, it's all about a balance and yeah, you know, finding trying, that. I, i've supported our family for the uh past 20 years or so uh, being an illustrator and so it is possible so all okay. those of you that are like i want to be an illustrator can i actually make a living at this you can make a living at this you can do it it takes a lot of work and um you have to love it but um but if you love it you can definitely make a living at it so yeah um you know that's that's like my my dad used to tell me you know, if you find something you love, you never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing, if you're doing that, and you really work every day of your life. Yeah, I think. Well, granted, but it doesn't <laughs> yeah. feel quite as much as you know. I, I mean, I've worked for some jobs where you wake up in the morning and it just feels like soul crushing labor. Oh, I hate and that. And like, I, I, I don't want to go in today, but I've got bills to pay. I gotta go. I gotta go. Um. But, you know, if you're if you're doing something you love, it's like, OK, I got to work today. But it's kind of on my terms. Yeah. Uh, which which is always nice. Um, and it's not easier. You end up working, I think, harder. But because you love it and it's for yourself, I, I think it is more. Yeah. Rewarding, so. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I was like I said, um, my dad used to run home based businesses out of our home as, I, as when I was a kid. And he always used to say, well, you know, the hours suck, the pay is horrible. And quite frankly, I don't like my boss that much, but I'm doing it on my terms. <laughs> because he'd pull sometimes 14 hour days just getting the business done exactly how he wanted it done. And 
So I guess that's kind of the trade-off, you know, where you can work for somebody else and do whatever they want, or you can work longer and harder and work for yourself. Uh, I guess in the illustration uh, aspect, you know, you're still working for somebody else, but you get a bit more freedom. Well, you know you're onto something when you look forward to Monday mornings and getting down there to your studio with your cup of coffee yeah. and your slippers and your pajamas still on. And <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, even you even look for hours to kind of feel like even if you're doing something else to pay the bills. You know, like in my case, certainly illustration doesn't pay the bills yet. Hopefully soon. Hopefully, let's <laughs> see who knows. But my point is that I, I find that I look for time to draw and I try to make time to draw, and it's just. It just beats that kind of, as, as Jeff rightfully said, waking up with that sort of soul crushing feeling like, why, why, why am I doing this? Why am I putting all my time and energy into this when I could be doing something I enjoy tremendously? And, you know, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a liberating feeling to be able to say, I can do that and to, you know, work for yourself. I was told back in college that it takes about um, about 10 years to become established as an illustrator. And it's funny enough, about exactly 10 years in, I, I noticed all of a sudden I was paying all my bills with illustration. And I looked around and I, I, did, I did the math and I was like, oh my gosh, it was exactly 10 years in. This is crazy. So don't get discouraged. It takes about that long to um, to make a living at it. And I think it's I'm not sure if it's easier nowadays or not. It must be easier with the internet and everything. Like I said early on, um, I had to do portfolio drops in New York City and bring your portfolio around. You mailed everything. You didn't, you know, have yeah. email. I'm thinking it's easier now, but I, but then again, it seems like there's a lot more people out there that are that are wanting yes. to be illustrators. So it seems like a lot more competition. That's true. So. That's true. Yeah. Um, one of the questions uh, that I, I know a lot of my friends ask, which is is having like an art degree that vital uh, to breaking into the industries? I don't so. think so. Mm. Yeah, I don't think so either. Oh. Yeah, I have a diploma from Capilano University. University. No one has ever, ever asked me in any field of illustration, even architectural illustration, if I, where I went to school, all that matters is your portfolio. Yeah. And if you can meet your deadline. <laughs> I've been asked because I've done some full-time positions, um, you know, as, a, as either an illustrator or designer or whatever, but not often. Um, mostly they want to see your portfolio and that you can make your deadline and everything. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a big thing. So, but I, I do have a degree in illustration. So from Pratt. I find it so it's interesting. Just that there... Sorry, please go. go ahead. No, 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 you go. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, I was just saying, I, I found it really interesting that Jeff actually brought that up. Um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that I kind of, I enrolled in, in CGMA to kind of bring my art back up to scratch to have kind of an intensive program to do. And I really believed at that time that you did need an art degree to be able to kind of break into, into the illustration industry. And, um, you know, from talking to all my instructors, I, I, I guess, I, I guess two things actually that I learned from them, none of them, or maybe only a handful of them actually had degrees they were all you know no it's all about your portfolio and the other thing that i kind of noticed was that whatever level of artist you are there is an audience for your art like there is somebody out there that's really going to appreciate that what you know what it is that you're putting out there and um which was really really remarkable you know it was uh and reassuring <laughs> at the same time especially you're still kind of somebody's trying to sort of build their their skill base and build their their um, you know their exposure and their portfolio and things like that. So it, it's quite kind of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not exhilarating, but what I mean is it's it's liberating. It's liberating in a way. It makes you push harder because you know you want to achieve something great. And at the same time it's nice to actually see responsiveness to what you're doing on some level or another, which keeps making you want to do better. So. Yeah, success isn't really a an end it's it's just it's a continual it's a journey so you have to uh to enjoy the the journey and do your art and um the audience will find you so if you do your art and you, and you love your art it, you can see that that everyone can see that in your art so mm -hmm. if you do something that you enjoy um the the you will get people's attention uh, just because they'll be able to see that love and that passion you put into it if you spend all your time trying to copy whatever's popular or to try to do something because you think it'll sell it it, you won't find as much success. So you'll make your niche being, being yourself. So 
And I think the the good thing things uh, of school about art and art classes and art courses, uh, getting back to that, is that um, maybe you don't need it to break into the industry, but it can help you to um, learn quickly and make some connections because uh, the most valuable thing I I have from my years at the school, I did an illustration course and so I, I did it, but it's my friends. Uh, they are um, the best support I have because sometimes you have some struggles while doing these things and having someone to talk to that know what it means and can help you to uh, go through blocks or down times or even just uh, difficulty because you don't know how to approach a piece or do a thing it's uh, that's to me is the most valu valuable thing of uh, art school art courses and things like that so if someone need that that's great but you don't need it to break into the industry to me at least I also imagine kind of working in an art school, you know, probably prepares you for meeting deadlines. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I, I guess if you've got a book set to be published at a certain date, you can't really have, you know, the art being three days later than they were supposed to go to the publisher. Mm -hmm. um, one of the big things I wanted to built on from that was um, kind of building up a brand online, building yourself up as a brand. And I know people have had issues with this. Uh, does that kind of fall back into just if you keep doing what you're doing, it falls into uh, you'll find your audience? Well, in terms of building a brand, artists have to remember that you are you're you're a product i mean you're you know you you have to brand yourself in a way that people will recognize um your art and be able to find you when they want to find you so um you, you know in terms of of uh brand for instance all right my my work is kind of all over the place if i look at my <laughs> i look at my work style wise and and i i wonder how can people put together that's the same artist but but they do they do put together they're like oh yeah you did the social seasonings tea boxes and this piece for shadow run i like and i'm like they look nothing alike but it's because i have branded myself as an artist that does all these things um I and mean, i have you know it's important to have uh business cards and um an online presence that stays consistent that people when they see your work they can recognize it and it just amazes me how people can can see one part over there and over there and put it together it's the same artist but it all comes down to to, to branding yourself so um i'm specifically branded as having a wide range but if you you know specialize in something you, you know you brand around around that um that's not really helping you or making a lot of sense but you know <laughs> that's just my take on it so it makes more sense than you think it would <laughs> uh, I, um Jeff, you might know I do a, a YMCA dream home house here every year, and I, it's in the paper. It's everyone. Yeah. So when I go to parties, people ask you, "Well, what do you do for a living?" And I think I don't want to. Do I want to say I do uh, role playing game art and get into big long discussion about that? So I just say, "Oh, you know that thing you see in the paper every year? That's my work. That's what I do." And they go, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, in the local, in the local paper, you know everybody sees that big drawing of the dream house they're raffling off and everything yeah so it's the one it's the one commercial job other than rpg stuff i do now it's sort of a charity thing but i, I it's fun i get to go out and photograph this thing on site and, but uh, it's not something it's not one of those early monday morning projects that i'm eager to get down and get in front of not not like drawing a uh you know, some kind of velociraptor or some kind of wraith or something for Goodman Games. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess networking is as vital in today's industry or even more so uh, than ever before for artists. Yes. And I think uh, artists, artists often think uh, that branding themselves keep a part of the uh, dreamy um, world of the art uh, away because it's something more uh, related to business in the general idea but there's nothing wrong with that I 
I'm really bad at branding myself and having a presence online. So I'm the first <laughs> that speaks uh, and doesn't do the, what she said. But um, uh, maybe you can see this just because I feel that way often. And I think uh, it's something we should learn to do just a bit because uh, internet now is uh, it's very quick. Uh, everything changed fast and move fast. And I don't think you have to put things out every day because if you are working, sometimes you can't and that's okay. Uh, but just trying to be active maybe somewhere or where you have fun to do that and just be yourself and put yourself out there is uh, is the best way to brand yourself because it's honest, it's, it's true. It's what you are and just you're just showing it with your art and with your presence. I've always put my work out there with my branding and I'm terrible at networking. Um, yeah. Partially because at the beginning I had to do it, you know, face to face and I have face blindness. So I have a hard time remembering people's faces. So that makes it awful for networking when people come up and they're like, you're like, Hey, and you're like, they're, they're like, um, we had dinner last night. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I totally forgot that because I can't recognize people's faces. So networking is naturally really hard. Mm -hmm. um, it's easier with the internet though, definitely, mm -hmm. but it's a little overwhelming. There's so many places to, to be active on and they're always shifting and changing. So um, I've always just done my work and put a consistent brand behind it and just kept throwing it out there and let people find me. That was, that's the way I, I handle my networking. Yeah. Come to me. <laughs> I'm not going to come to you. Come to me. So. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that, you know, we mentioned social media and, and networking like, um, okay, I, I make no pretense that I'm a brand or anything like that, but what's um, my experience has been I think I've had less success with putting my stuff out on social media and sort of waiting for people to come to me kind of thing, right? But what I found does work is that if you find an opportunity to actually just engage on, on a very personal and human level with people, and then you find some kind of common ground with them and you find like a shared passion. And, and, and also from, from a, let's call it a business perspective, like a need that you can fulfill, right? So like these guys that are self-publishing, these are all labors of love. To these people right and if they can find an artist that's happy to work with them and help them create something wonderful as well something they're going to be proud of something you can be proud of as well there's a synergy right there and that's how it works then they like it and they, they recommend you and they you know they you get their friends to take a look at your stuff and i think it just sort of builds organically like that but it comes through less of a social media platform than does more kind of like a human interaction right? on a human level you, you interact with people and it's very personalized um that way Yes, I saw just a day ago uh, an interesting um, podcast on YouTube. I don't know if we are allowed to, show, to share things like that, but yeah. um, I can put a link maybe somewhere because yeah. uh, I haven't finished to see it, but it's very, very interesting and it speaks uh, just like about this. And I think uh, it's, to me at least, it was uh, very interesting because I, I, I do many, I have I'm many Ah, sorry, my English. <laughs> I'm often scared about uh, internet connection to seems fake because you have to think about it sometimes and it puts away some of the spontaneous action that you can have face-to-face uh, -face with, with a person. But it was very interesting because there was, a, um, the, I think it's the marketing manager of D&D &D and uh, they spoke about uh, uh, to relate with social media and business things like that it, for artists and RPG creators in general. So even authors, if uh, it's something that can be interesting for the public, I can share it. I'm, yeah, absolutely. We would, okay. I would put a link. I'm down. sure that the viewers and um, just artists in general would absolutely love to, to watch that. Um, and because any any advice is pretty much welcome, I think. Um, I think the best way to break yeah. into the industry is to do the art that you love and then just keep putting it out there because really 
people can see that you love it. So if you don't have a project for a small publisher even yet, just, you know, find something you want to illustrate that excites you and then start illustrating it and keep sharing it. And then somebody will be like, oh, I love that. Hey, I really like that. And, and I'm and I'm doing this RPG that, you know, I need I need an illustrator for. Do you, do you do commercial work? And it'll happen. They'll find you. And then all of a sudden you've done work for these jobs. And then, um, you know, the more passionate you are about it, the more, uh, the more people will find it, so. Yeah, and all those portfolio pieces you don't do in the early days, you just turn them into uh, stock art sets and sell them on drive through RPG. Mm. Well, <laughs> That's a reason hard to do. Yeah, and <laughs> I've gotten so much work from small publishers who've been buying my um, fantasy clip bank sets and they want to hire someone who, so they can have a consistent style through their book. They want to hire you to do a few more pieces other than the stock one. And they, they turn into regular clients after that. Oh, that's good advice. That's really cool advice. Yeah. Um, I, I think drive through RPG has opened the door for a lot of publishers and artists in that way. Um, just having a place where you can put out whatever you want without having to worry about, oh, how am I going to pay for publishing a book or something like that? Yeah. Well, artists definitely need a website. I actually get that question. People ask me, do I need a website? Yes, you need a website. <laughs> you need a portfolio site. It doesn't even matter if it's a free one anymore um, because they have really, really nice ones out there nowadays. Um, yes, you need a website uh, that shows your artwork and look at other people's sites. Try to avoid, don't, first of all, a couple rules about putting up websites of your artwork. Uh, don't talk down about your own work. You know, don't don't say things like, well, this is my art. I hope you really like it. Please hire me. You know, I don't really like it, but, you know, never do that. Don't 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 ever do that. When somebody is looking to hire you, your part of your branding is, is selling them a perceived um, perception of yourself. You need to come off like, you know, hey, this is what I do and I'm really good at it and I love doing it and I want to work for you and, um, you know, and put up your best pieces but they they see they, they need to see you as a professional that loves what you do and, and if you can convince them that if, that you're successful and that you're um you know working illustrator and you know you make your deadlines then they'll believe it it's it's um like if, for instance if you go to a if you go to a store and you want to buy a bag of chips and you see doritos which you recognize and it's all like a queen kush bag and you see like you know Jose's nachos and they're all like crunched up and looking all nasty and like they've been there for 40 million years you're probably going to buy the Doritos because they, they just you're familiar with them and they look definitely much more edible so you know that's what branding is branding is, is selling people um they're selling people confidence in, in your in your brand and that you can you know deliver what you promise mm. so you know, Doritos are going to taste good and like Doritos. So when people see your yeah. artwork online, they should say, hey, this person is going to make my deadlines and I'm going to get that quality of artwork and it's going to be awesome. So if you start talking down about yourself, they're going to start to doubt you. So even if you talk down about yourself at home, don't, don't do it publicly. Mm -hmm. We all talk down about ourselves at home, so don't worry. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh, the old kind of fake it till you make it. <laughs> type thing you know you fake the confidence for as long as you need to until you start making your reputation i guess uh, artists are some of the most um insecure people in the whole world like all of us i think um except for maybe there's a cocky few but m most of the ones i've ever met inside are like you know ah you know i'm not really good but you know then you just keep going to the next level and then you're like oh i'm not very good but you forget the you forget that you were you know at that that previous level not too long ago so yeah. so just have confidence and and work with what you're at yeah and some and some of us got into art so we would have be able to avoid public speaking <laughs> oh really <laughs> here we are speaking publicly <laughs> Yeah, um, I know a couple people who have always told me, and they do art and everything, and they always say that they are their own worst critics. That's definitely true. Yeah, I think that's a very common um, common perception, actually, with artists. I know a piece is done when I can't stand looking at it anymore. I'm like, oh god, that's awful! I can't stand looking at it anymore. It's done. Just just get it out of here. And people are like, I love it. I'm like, uh huh, good, good. Moving on. So that's that's my personal way of knowing something's done. Because I get so tired of it, I'm like, ooh. 
So just but, get um, it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> get it away from me. <sighs> so um, okay, kind of getting back to social media, um, it, it does offer, uh, I guess, an easier platform for you to interact with the fans of your work. Um, and I guess that would be kind of a double-edged sword um, in a lot of ways. And anybody want to kind of make a comment about that? Like the positives and negatives of the social media uh, interaction with fans? Well, like I guess William just said, some of us don't necessarily like talking publicly very well. Um, I, 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 I um, you know, never, never liked public speaking. I was the kid who always, you know, went in the bathroom and threw up before you had to speak in front of people. Um, you know, like in class, they're like, you have to do this presentation. And here I am barfing in the bathroom. Cause I'm like, oh, what the hell? So I said, became a teacher, which definitely helps with that. It's like trial by fire. Um, and uh, you, you become better at it. But the, the part, problem with, part of the problem with social media is that um, it's difficult for some artists because we just want to create art and we don't necessarily we worry about how, how, you know, how well we'll do public speaking and everything. Um, and there's so many different platforms and so, so much to take you know, to figure out where your, where your niche is. I know that I'm still trying to figure out, um, uh, I, like I'm tempted to, to, to I want to do a lot more like online tutorials, but I really kind of don't want to do any online tutorials either. I don't really want to. So there's, but you feel pressured into, into wanting to do the uh, social media. So that's a negative for, for me. I don't know. What do you guys think? You guys excited find, to do social media? I, I find Instagram to be just amazing. I, I'm on I'm everything, Instagram. but Instagram is so responsive and you can just, just a little smiley as, or as a thank you or, and I'm discovering so many amazing artists on there. And um, I know, I think it's the best of all of them. Um, yeah, I, I like agree. Instagram best. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I, I was agreeing. Actually, I agree with William completely, like you were saying. Um, Instagram has been the best platform for me so far. Um, I mean, talking about things like doing tutorials on, on YouTube and, and, and stuff like that, I, I don't know about you guys, but I find that you know the idea comes to mind. I always kind of indulge the fancy of doing it, but um, getting down to it, it's just I always feel like I'm distracted by other things, and I'm like, time 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 is just this one thing that always seems to be getting away from me and I, i'd rather be kind of you know focusing on on well the art than you know, mm -hmm. making videos or something like that so that's what 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 i find i guess that's another thing um with social media right there's this uh there's this learning curve depending on what you're using and at the same time I, perhaps like once you kind of start letting your audience kind of get used to something there's this expectation that now you need to be consistent with it you need to keep doing that and therefore you know you put out one video and I need to put out another one next week or something along that and it adds this um it adds this stress I guess to you as the as the artist am I an artist now or am I a creator of, of you know social media content and that, that's kind of what happens right? it's a slippery slope because you don't mm. want to get too sucked into having to make all these tutorials and all these you know, do all this stuff online where you, all of a sudden you find you don't have any room for art. Um, I, uh, people have asked me for years why I didn't start a Patreon. I just started a Patreon about six months ago. Um, and I did start it for years because I was worried that I'd, I'd get a lot of advertising work that would jump in and screw up my whole schedule. And it was great, but I, I was concerned about the amount of stress that I would have by not fulfilling for my fans on Patreon. I was like, well, what if I can't keep up with it? I mean, you know, so I finally found something that I wanted to do about six months ago and decided I was going to do it. And I'm doing it on my own terms and it, it's going really well because I can, you know, post up what I want. It's not stressful and it's not overwhelming, but it, yeah, the stress of having to, to deliver content can be, uh, you know, people can be pretty demanding about well, when's your next tutorial yeah. coming out? Like, That's um, exactly it. It's a, it's a chicken egg situation as well, right? Because like, um, you know, you want to make your audience happy. You want them to, to share with their friends. And then, you know, you want their friends to become, you know, expand your audience base as well. But at the same time, it's like, you just want to do the art, you know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you really have to make a choice as an artist mm. about what you're going to be involved with. You can't be involved with everything or all of a sudden you're, you know, you're a you know, social media person. You're not an artist anymore. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to kind of make those choices myself. I'm 
decide to be busy with the with the Patreon, try to be a little more active in Instagram. Um, but I don't, I don't think I want to do any tutorials. And I don't really offer any paid classes. People ask me, why don't you do paid classes? You have like 30 years of experience and so much advice. Um, the only time that I offer advice and talk to young artists and, and stuff is really for free. I, I only I, I made the choice to do it on panels. Um, I'm also the judge for the illustrators of the future. So we want to I want to I run a um, week long seminar down there and I and I talk to uh, the students and I teach them and and, I'll, t and I'll, I'll teach people individually when they ask me to, but I, I decided that I don't want to do like paid content, how to be an illustrator classes and stuff like that, because I, that just, I feel stressed by it. I don't, I don't like the feeling because I'd, I'd rather share the information and, and help people, you know, without the stress of having to, having to deliver. So then I can do stuff like this and, and offer advice, you know, and it's fun. It's not work. <laughs> so. I'll let someone else talk because I'm talking too much. I also think that social media uh, are more important for artists who want uh, to promote their own own work and work only on their stuff. Here we are all working for uh, for a commitment uh, and for a publisher or uh, I think RPG uh, word means you work with uh, an art director that gives you the work and make you and you do that. While if you work only on your subjects, only on your ideas, and you have to um, yeah. to make a living from that, to sell them or um, sell prints and stuff like that. Then um, social media medias come to be much more important. I think, important, I think, because you have to show your work somewhere and and put it out even more. And I also have some friends that are, that are um, doing some streams on Twitch, and they are enjoying that very much. Uh, I don't feel very much comfortable with that, and I think everyone should pick um, what uh, what feels good for uh, for you. Um, there are so many uh, platforms you can use. As I said, you don't have to pick and do everything you can. Uh, for example, I'm enjoying to teach some classes uh, in a local school. Uh, I would never ask to do that because I didn't, I didn't feel ready. But since they asked, I did it. But yeah. everyone has mm, some comfortable zone and some things that don't feel comfortable. So you should pick what, what's good for you and do that. Don't worry too much about uh, uh, that artist. Uh, does this, this one does this and it works. Yes, it works uh, for them. It, it don't have to work with you too. Yeah, I know. Be I know. It, Beatrice, not your that. English is great. You just managed to say no, that. Like, not. What I was trying I'm to sorry. say, but much clearer. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that was awesome. So. Um, I, I know some artists, you know, they don't mind when people are watching them draw live, like on Twitch or something, but other artists, um, just kind of like to be left to their own process and kind of work however it is they work and, you know, they get a little self-conscious when they're being watched. I've seen some of my friends streaming and other artists streaming, and I've also noticed that to me that's a bit of a negative uh, part. People there are very demanding, very, very, very much demanding. And uh, you have to also be an intratrainer when you are on Twitch sometimes. Mm, that's something to consider when to decide to use yeah. that or not. So, uh, yes, there are I mean, some the take, negatives. Yeah, the but, takeaway is do what you what you're comfortable with. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Now this is uh, a question that I, I've seen a lot to various artists, and that is kind of what is your favorite medium to use for artwork? Pen, paper, easels digital or kind of a mixture of all of the above well, i like to mix it up during the day um i find penciling and inking are can be quite hard on the hand but then i go switch over to a couple hours of digital work and it, it's even though i'm using a stylus it's um easy it sort of corrects things if I do eight hours of inking, like crosshatch in a day, I can't even close my hand at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But um, penciling is easy. And I would just switched over to colored pencil and some watercolor. And it just 
my hand feels great at the end of the day. So that's always a concern for a lot of artists I know is carpal tunnel. Mm -hmm. But so if you can switch it up, that's probably best for your long term career. Yeah, I like to use pencil for the basic drawing line art and things like that. And then uh, uh, it depends on what I have to do. Uh, if I'm working for clients, I usually prefer to work digitally because uh, it's easier to make changes if you need and it's quicker you don't have to put out all the paint all the paintings and the stuff and it's more practical and I also like it I'm using a program now that I feel very comfortable with and it's very uh, replicates very much the traditional feeling of the painting so I really like it but for my personal drawing when I have the spare time to do that I, I prefer traditional like oils or uh, Gosh, gosh, I think it's the pronunciation. I don't know. I like gosh. Yes, gosh. Okay. And um, I prefer the traditional feeling when I can just relax and paint what I like, what I feel. Nice. What about you, Hamad? Um, traditional, definitely. I mean, my preferred medium is definitely ink on paper, um, and I prefer to use pens, uh, technical pens, uh, for that. I, I love working in pencil as well. Um, and even when I work in color, I like working in color pencils, um, but I do do some digital stuff. Um, but maybe, maybe actually, you know, I do some, but not that much. I, I sometimes I'll colorize some of my ink pieces uh, digitally, but I, I only have a handful of pieces I've ever started beginning to end digitally, right? Usually I kind of mix media up, but the simple answer is I definitely just like working with ink. It's such an unforgiving format and when you actually kind of pull off something with it. You're, you're so proud of yourself. You feel great. And, you know, of course, you're the exact, exact diametric opposite of that because, you know, you mess it up. That's it. You're dead. Start over. You know what I mean? That's it. it's just how it is. <laughs> So yeah, I, that's that's the beauty of that medium. I really like it. I'd, I'd love to master it actually, and just sort of immerse myself even more uh, in it. I, I do enjoy it. And I've, I've seen uh, some of Echo's pieces. I don't know if they're done completely digitally. I've seen some that are being colored digitally. Um, uh, depends on the piece. Um, I was trained traditionally. I was trained in pen and ink and oil paintings um, because I'm old enough that it was before the digital age. So um, <laughs> then I then I got into uh, working in Photoshop and Illustrator and I like that too. And so now it's a matter of, of I like doing my drawings by hand. I've always just for some reason I like doing my drawings pencil on paper or pencil on vellum, but I, I, I'll finish them digitally or traditionally or digitally or you know half and half or whatever in the mood for whatever whatever will do the piece the most justice um it's kind of like asking you know do you like cookies or do you like cake well i like cookies and cake so you know, kind of depends on the mood yeah it kind of depends on the mood i mean i usually i'm usually working on like when right now i'm working on a digital painting a traditional painting and a drawing in as well as a couple other things but you know i, I like to i, I kind of have the, the 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 traditional stuff's over there the digital stuff's here and the you know, the digital stuff's here and the um, drawings are over there and I just, I do all three. And so there's, I usually do through all three during the day. I'll be like working here and then I'll get tired of working digitally. So I'll go over there and work on that. And then I'll go over and work on that. And then, you know, I just, I switch around. I, 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 I let my, um, you know, my mood dictate how I'm going to be, uh, what I'm going to be working on, which media. Nice. Well, that, so. That's always a great way to kind of view it. You know, you go with whatever, you know, okay, I'm tired of doing everything digitally. Let's let's actually grab a real paintbrush. <laughs> Digitally is not necessarily easier than traditional. Some people think it is. It really doesn't take me any less time and it's not easier. Um, they both have their pluses and minuses. Um, you know, working digitally, you can make a lot more changes. So you tend to be like, hmm, what if this is this? What if this is this color? And you tend to noodle a lot more. Um, but traditionally, it's very satisfying when you do something and it looks good and then you manage to not screw it up. So, um, they, you know, they all, they, all, they all have their bonuses. They're, I, like, I like them all. Mm -hmm. So um, it just depends on the project. So on the, uh, my, my Patreon, I, I'm doing one month, I'll do a pen and ink with gold. And then one month, I'll do a, a digital painting. And then the next month, I'll do a traditional painting. I never know what to expect from me. My <laughs> patrons are like, wow, we just, we never know what we're going to get. I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> well, the huge <laughs> advantage of doing traditional is you can sell the, uh, people love buying their originals at conventions. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're sort of getting paid twice for the same jobs if you're lucky. It's a definite, definite bonus to having an original, yeah. And I also think that 
you don't have to choose uh, digitally or traditionally to, to work in the industry because when you open a, a, a handbook of D&D or any other game, there are paintings that are done digitally or traditionally, maybe both half and half. And sometimes you don't even notice the difference because what's matter is the final result. So what what's fit best for the, the artist? What, what you can nowadays, yeah. With. Yes, yes, nowadays. I was told early on, like uh, I think it was Steve Jackson Games told me, they're like, no, no, we don't, do, we don't use digital art. <laughs> that was like, you know, or when it was first new and everything. So, um, uh, but nowadays, yeah. It, as long as it's a good piece of art, yeah, doesn't matter. Um, so here's kind of a question. I'm going to start with uh, William again, kind of going from my left. Um, do you kind of have a, a process that you go through uh, to kind of get ideas or inspiration um, for a piece? Well. When I work for my own product line for Mutant Epoch, I just, I, I know exactly what the text is saying. So I just follow along there. But with my um, client work, like for example, Goodman Games, I work with uh, art director, Matt, he'll just give me a brief. It's usually only a paragraph um, and a dimensions to work in. And go, then they say, go to town. And I've been working with them for so long now that I, I know what they like. Um, it's usually all traditional, um, yeah mostly ink on paper. And so the, the actual process is to do the pencil sketch, scan it, send it. And usually by the same day, they say, change this and go ahead or just you know, go for it. Yeah. And then um, just to scan again, 300 DPI TIFF and off to the publisher. Mm. Uh, and sure. yes, uh, for me it's almost the same. I mean, when working for clients, I receive a brief and read that, and then I usually uh, wait a day before starting to work on it because I like to let it sink a bit, and then ideas come to mind, and I start sketching, maybe gathering some reference. And about reference, I usually prefer to do. Uh, very small rough sketches before to search for references and then use them to enrich my drawing but um, usually yes I do the sketches uh, in paper then scan them in color send the sketches to the art director first of course and then I step to colors and send another proof and when it's approved the uh, work is done when I work for myself for my personal pieces uh, sometimes I need to explore a bit more ideas because uh, I have something in the mind, but I can't really focus on what it is and now I can look it, I can make it look uh, on paper and it helps me uh, to do some writing, to, to, do, to put ideas on papers, words, just words like uh, uh, what is the center of the piece, what could look like, how it could look like. Um, just small words, not not really complicated things, but just brainstorming a bit and then move to the sketches and the process is almost the same then, but don't send anything to our director. I'm the one picking. Yeah. Not. Um, client work, um, I'll probably, of course, after reading the brief or after having a conversation, what I'll do is I'll probably thumbnail as many ideas that I can. What, what I find is, um, <laughs> More often than not, I end up dismissing the first idea that comes to my head because I feel like it's the obvious one. And then I just sort of try to and challenge myself to create like a handful, maybe a, a dozen uh, thumbnails. And once I've kind of figured that out and uh, you know figured out my composition, I'll knock up a rough, send it to the client. Um, if they're cool with it, then yeah, I'll just have at it. I'll sort of, uh, I guess the process here would be, I try to do the lines first um, in pencil. And I, then I start really going into the detail at the pencil level. So I, I, like, I don't just create outlines and then start rendering in ink. I'll actually try to finish the piece as much as I can, then maybe 90% complete in, uh, in pencil. And then uh, again, show that to the client, then I'll scan it in and I'll use a light board to kind of go over it in ink. That's my usual approach. 
Work for me, on the other hand, I might just go ink the paper right away. So it's it just I take the complete opposite approach to that. And echo. Uh, oh. I guess about the same as everyone else. I mean, when you you know for a commercial job, you you get the the brief in, and um, if it's a story, I like to try to read it or, um, or get as much information as I can. Getting inspiration for it. Usually not too hard with that. You don't have a problem getting information with it. It depends what kind of mood I'm in and what the project is. Um, so sometimes I, and I like to bring a lot of uh, different inspirational elements into my piece. So sometimes I'll do some research of, um, you know, different cultures or different uh, photographs, elements, just to kind of, you know, bring a different level into things. And then uh, do some do the sketches and, uh, um, you know, proceed to finish when those get approved. Um, sometimes working with working with an art director, you have to do some reverse management because the art director doesn't necessarily know what's best for the project. A lot of times, um, sometimes if they're young or they are, or especially if you're working directly with the writer, uh, they have something in their head that isn't the strongest piece. So I found that um, I'll send them a sketch of what they wanted and then I'll send them a sketch of what I think would look better. Um, well, this is what I recommend. And a lot of times, but not always, but a lot of times they'll go, oh, what do you even think about that? And they'll, and they'll 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 kind of get a little trust in you and let you move ahead with what you um, think is the best. Because um, it, it, working with an art director is a, a two way road. You have to communicate back and forth, um, and um, depends on like I said, if you're working with the art director or working with a writer. Working with writers, writers picture things different than artists do, and they they have this great idea in their head, and it not necessarily go with the visuals. So if you're working directly with an author of like an RPG or especially with the smaller companies, um, a lot of times you have to kind of get them to trust you know what you're doing and um, and sell them on something that you're like, yeah, this is what you want, but this is what it was really cool. And they're like, oh yeah, okay. So um, don't be afraid to push back on the art directors a little bit. Okay, and that actually kind of brings me to one of my next questions, which is, you know, when you're tasked for, uh, working on a piece, do you kind of get to choose what piece or does the art director uh, kind of tap you for very specific uh, bit that they want? Like say they want, let's just say for d and sake, like an image of a ranger. Do they kind of say, oh, well, this one's yours and then just kind of give you the, the briefing on it and everything? Or do they kind of let you say, go through what they have planned for say fighter, barbarian, whatever, and kind of let you choose your own project. No, they're very specific. Yeah. 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 No, there's very, I don't think I've ever been given a job where it's just like, Hey, do me a fantasy illustration of some, you know, I might get, Oh, have some characters fighting this beholder or something, mm -hmm. but that's about as general as it gets. Usually it's very specific. And sometimes with what they're wearing, what armor, um, the races, like one's a half orc or something, right? Like it, it's always very specific. Mm. I actually have a client that uh, prefer to send to all the artists the same email with the descriptions and the, the brief he needs the illustration for. And you pick the one you would like to work on. You send them the numbers name, and then uh, he, assign them but you hmm. usually give what's one of the one or two of the one you like uh but then of course uh, sometimes you have pretty neat descriptions sometimes they uh, send you references uh other times you are very much free to do what you want because just just a simple description like uh, an elf ranger with a with a lion, I don't know, and then you you can do what you want in that frame. Uh, so yes, that's that's what I um, encounter till now. Yes. Come on. Yeah, I, I'm sort of. Um, I shared. I've shared Beatrice's experience in this one. I would say that um, I've had people that have come up to me with something very general and said, "Hey, draw me like a, a barbarian fighting a, an undead or something like that." Or, and people that have come to me to the, like, he's wearing a ring that's this size on this finger, you know, you know, and like up to that level of, 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 um, you need to so so very specific detail, very ultra specific, like ultra, cause I, I guess it's just the character that they love or something that they wanted to see my interpretation of. Um, 
so yeah, I've, I've kind of seen both extremes. I don't, I'm, I don't think I've had more of one than the other. It really seems to kind of, I'm, I'm midline on this one. And what about you, Echo? Depends on the job and who I'm working with. Um, like I said, a lot of that's the relationship with the art director. Um, Shadowrun, they like to send a list out of, of the, all the art and let you pick which ones you want to work on. Um, and uh, usually they'll send me some, what about, you know, do you want to do any of these? And I'll, I'll say whether or not I want to do any of those. But uh, um, a lot of times now cost, uh, clients just trust me to do what I do. And so they'll say, well, we need, we need to make sure that there's a, you know, Elven Ranger in here somewhere, but then they'll just leave it on rest up to me, which is really nice. Um, it, I find it a lot more difficult when they're very specific on the pose. I don't, I don't do so well with those. I prefer to, to have a little bit more freedom to do what I do. Um, just because I, you know, I think as visuals, we, uh, as artists, we visualize things in our own way. And we can, if, if our directors let us do what we do, we can come up with something stronger than if uh, they, you know, are like, well, they're standing in this pose and they have this ring and they're doing this exactly. You know, I find those pieces don't necessarily come out as well, even, you know, even if you work really hard on them. So, but um, yeah, there's always some sort of, um, rules to conform to that's what makes it illustration and uh, i think that's what makes it fun you know yeah. so solve I, this problem <laughs> i really enjoy to work on descriptions on briefs and but yes you have to have some freedom to do the best you can because it's nice to put together something someone else uh, imagine it and but you have to put something yours in it to make it special, I think, because it's a it's a union on, of two ideas, and uh, I think that's the beautiful thing, at least for me. Uh, so yes, I I would advise some freedom to the artist from the art director. <laughs> yeah, in terms of preference, I agree there as well. It's nice to have some leeway to kind of inject a part of yourself into it, but it happens sometimes. You get those guys that just want it just so exactly in that way, which is fair. Yes, and it's work, you do it. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, now I know that this next question is difficult for pretty much any artist. It's kind of like asking to pick your favorite child, but do you guys have a favorite piece that you've done? Uh, and kind of where you got the inspiration for it? Uh, William? Um. I don't know if you can see this. Oh yeah. This was my um pretty well my first color piece for Goodman Games, as you probably see it better here. It was one of the first things I saw a big stack of these arrived in the studio published. This goes back a while, but I this is the one I have up in my studio all the time. It always reminds me of a um, making that leap from a commercial illustrator and graphic designer to pretty well full-time fantasy artist after that even just um for working on my own stuff as well but yeah th this particular piece yeah it, it's my favorite it's an acrylic on board uh for me it's hard to pick but not because they are all my child but because uh, i i found art to to say okay that's something where i did something good uh, i see mistakes and errors everywhere so that's why it's hard to pick for me but i think uh, yes i have a couple of pieces that i look and think uh, okay that's not too bad uh, i recently did uh, an illustration of a unicorn and a cleric summoning it and i quite enjoy that because i like the subject and i think i enjoy that one in the back but it's a personal piece and it's really a fun art maybe, but it's uh, something I did for a convention and I have uh, some personal emotion attached to that. So that's why I like it for the emotions, not for uh, for the pieces itself, maybe. Well, you know, any reason to enjoy it. You know, can't <laughs> criticize one way or the other because as long as you love it, that's all that matters. Yeah. Uh, Hamad? Um. You're right. This is a really, really difficult question to answer. So thank you very much. Um, and I'm glad I didn't go first because I actually got to think about, it. you know what? I think one of the pieces that I'm most proud of is one I did last year for a, um, for a recording studio here in Bahrain. And, and they basically recorded this, uh, 
like a live album of a whole bunch of uh, rock and metal bands here in Bahrain, and they called it Metal Live in Bahrain. And what the, the guy came up to me and and he said, "Hamad, I want you like I feel I feel that the live music captured the energy of the bands, but I'd like you to capture the energy of the fans and draw you know things you know like that. And I'd like to be able to see it both in square and in portrait format. You know, maybe we can put it on T-shirts and stuff like that." And so. It was just an ultra detailed piece, like, and I got to tell so many little stories and I got to kind of play a game where as I was figuring out composition and, and, and layout and what characters I'd have in there, just be able to tell a lot of micro stories with the you know, hope that anybody looking at it, every time you look at it, you're going to see somebody new, you're going to see another character, you're going to kind of like one of those Where's Waldo pieces, <laughs> Holy Waldo didn't come to the show. So um, I think I think that's um, my favorite. It was well over ninety-two hours working on on um, on that piece. So uh, you know I enjoyed it tremendously, actually. And when it was done, I was very very happy, with it. very happy with it. So I'd say yeah, that's probably the one I would choose. And I know that this one's going to be tough for Echo because I, I've seen all of all of her work and. Yeah, this is a tough one. So kind of along the lines of Beatrice, who was like. Well, I don't hate all of them today, so, so yeah, but there's some days, and then, but it depends on the industry too. I guess for um, for commercial work, I, I still like my social seasonings tea boxes. They they just, I don't know. I still don't hate them. I like them. So um, uh, the dragon and the koi and stuff, I like them. Um, I like what I'm working on right now for uh, my personal project. I have a, the Patreon, uh, which is the Excalibur project, and it's a little bit more sexy in nature, so I can do. Uh, more sexy women and I do like painting sexy women. Um, so I like the piece I'm working on now, which I can't really show you because, you know, I'm working on it, uh, but it'll be up soon. Um, for Shadowrun, I think I like either the tarot deck or the uh, the run, I mean, the, the I forgot what it's called, run and gun, I think. The, the one with the, the centaur on the cover. I have mm -hmm. this like badass centaur, like beating the snot out of this biker because they're like they're like we'll do a centaur you know shadow run centaur with like a machine gun and stuff and i'm thinking all right how am i gonna do that should i just have like a cool centaur standing there i'm like no what would i do if i was a centaur i would i would run that motorcycle down and beat the snot out of the guy on it so i get this guy like punching this other guy and i, and I really enjoyed doing that piece so like that's one of my favorite and then um i still like the pie cthulhu and i'm working on the cthulhu pieces too uh mm. yeah this is hard i should wait <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's it's like trying to choose your favorite child. I imagine kind of depends on um, the and the and area. Imagine, They're also different. Uh, so. Composition is important in any piece of art. I think the most important thing is to always learn something from a piece you've done, and then move on and try to do better. Sometimes you yeah. don't do actually better than the. the piece before uh sometimes you do a mess sometimes you do much more better but um, it's always learn something even if it's yes. never do that again <laughs> <laughs> yes but if you learn something from a piece even if you think you screwed that that's okay that's a reason to love it anyway i think yeah um uh, i remember one of my art teachers boy i pity him now um he used to tell me you know there you kind of have to know when to walk away from a piece um because he told one student in our class that you know this could have been great if you'd walked away at this point i think i'm now starting to learn to understand uh, okay i reached that point and uh it happens when I start to uh, add those small, small, small twitches that really don't count, doesn't count, sorry. And that's probably the, the point where you should say, okay, stop, or at least uh, stop for now. Maybe I, will, I look at it uh, in a couple of days or maybe a week, it's even better. Because then you can see if there's something you really need to still work on or if, general pieces okay it's done and it's always good to to focus on the general piece not only on the small details and it's even more important when you're working digitally because you can zoom in and see every small detail and sometimes it's useless honestly and i love doing small details but 
I, I'm learning that, okay, sometimes just quick strokes are more, uh, more effective than mm -hmm. thousand small perfect mm -hmm. details. I'm very guilty of this. I have destroyed so many pieces by over rendering, adding too much detail and, and having to start over. And, you know, my inner voice is like, yeah, you should have stopped. You should have stopped. But like, then it was perfect. Why would you do that? Why would you add all this fluff to it? Now go do it again. You know, it's kind of like that. So it happens a lot. Um, I haven't quite mastered reining it in just yet. Okay, um, here's kind of the, the big question, which is, do you guys have any projects coming up that you're uh, really excited about and want to promote? Uh, William. Well, um, I've just started working on black paper with colored pencil. Yeah. I'm doing a double page spread for uh, Goodman Games and it's, I've just ordered these new pencil crowns and they're really waxy and they're great. And I'm, I'm not sure I know what I'm doing, <laughs> but I'm having a great time. I'm just dying to get back to this thing. And it's, it's haunting me from my drawing table over there. <laughs> um, so I don't actually know what the actual end book is for that one, but I, I just love it. And besides that, I'm working on the cover for the expansion rules for the Mutant Epoch, the game I published myself. And it's going to be a digital painting and I'm working on each character individually because they'll be used for banner ads and they're going to be playable pre-generated characters at the back of this book. And so I'm super excited about that. And um, I'm working on a bunch of products, uh, of projects, sorry. <laughs> and they are for uh, various clients. I'm working on uh, some cards for a trading card game and I'm really, really enjoying that. It's a small project in European uh, publisher, but it's, I'm having so much fun with that. And also working on other RPG stuff, uh, Kickstarter that, uh, recently got founded from a client and uh, other private private uh, commissions. And I don't have really personal projects going on that I would like to promote, but I have some ideas I'd like to work on when I have time. Uh, and yes, that's something I'd like to do. I'd like to put some two of my passion, art and uh, astrology and uh, some esoteric uh, things. Uh, together but it's hard to find the time and when i will i probably will will have something more to say and show because now i don't have anything just idea and it's not clear yet come on and, um i'm actually in a in a i guess the fortunate situation where i, I don't have time for my personal art at the moment because I have to meet my deadlines with my with my clients but i guess in terms of those pieces the ones i'm most excited about, I guess. Well, one is this uh, five, the D and D five E module um, by the Pickled Dragon, Matt Rosher, and he's uh, he's asked me to do the cover for his book, and so I've been posting works on uh, in progress of that on my uh, my Instagram account, kind of hammering away at it. But um, another one that's kind of down the pipeline, not necessarily uh, tabletop gaming related, but it's actually the sequel to that Metal Live and Behind piece that I told you guys about earlier that I'm very proud of. The guy wants, is releasing another album and he wants me to do another full page of just crazy visual storytelling. And so I'm uh, kind of itching to get to that. Um, other than that, the other two projects I'm working on, I'm in dialogue with two people that are uh, self-publishing role-playing games. And um, you know, I'll be one off the contributing artists uh, on their, on their uh, work, hopefully, fingers crossed, that goes through. And finally, a, uh, a game book for an author in the UK who, um, who does lit, uh, uh, what do you call it? So it's called lit RPGs or lit, not altogether certain what, what the genre is called, a bit you know, older than that, <laughs> but what do you call it? Um, yeah, it, it, so he, he's asked me to do a few pieces for him as well. So that's, that's kind of my pipeline and the stuff that I'm excited about doing at the moment. Echo. Um opposite of totally opposite of Matt. I'm trying to uh I, I've spent so many years doing you know do, having uh, deadline after deadline after deadline I've been working the last year to try to um 
adjust my life and my schedule so that I can do more of my own, my personal pieces and less commercial work. Um, mm -hmm. Now I only take the commercial work I want. I just finished up um, a package design for Boss Beer and I'm doing a greeting card right now I have due for someone else and a book cover um, and how gas am I doing? I have an original painting due for somebody uh, but then I've been mostly trying to work on the Excalibur project, which is my personal piece as well. Oh, and I have a Shadowrun cover up coming up. Um, but I'm only trying to take the ones that I wanted, so that's kind of cool. So mo mo the one I want to promote would be, the, I guess, the Excalibur project, which is T H E X C A L I B E R project.com. So it's a little sexy, but um, that doesn't scare you. That's my that's what I'm working on. So <laughs> yeah, I, I've checked that out, and we'll definitely be posting links to your various works. Um, all of you, because honestly, some of you I have only discovered recently, a couple of you, um, but I will, I am definitely a fan now that I've seen your style and, you know, like anything else, you've discovered fans. <laughs> and uh, we'll be sure to pass that along through the CamCon site and everything and make sure we can get you guys more fans who are cool hopefully willing to do some, get you guys to do some commission work and because. Since this panel is about getting, oh, sorry, when you're done. Oh, I was just going to say, because, you know, we're, it's not a convention until you get somebody to do an art piece for you. And in our case, usually D&D characters that we've been playing for numerous, numerous years. So uh, since this panel's based towards people breaking into the industry and wanting to uh, to get work as an illustrator, um, I don't know if you you know maybe you should have them come in in the comments also if they have links to their own work too so that you know yeah absolutely we're trying to uh, always to get happy to, to, to check out new artists and to share uh, whatever treasures we find online which is you know let's face it the internet's been keeping us all sane for the most part for the last few months. Amen. Um, yeah. And Matt, uh, switching over for a bit, if you have time, uh, yeah. mental health is also important for artists. Like you were talking about working, you know, 18 hours and 15 hours a day and stuff like that. And I did that for years and um, I've been working, I, I found that after doing that for 10, 12 years or so, uh, I started to, uh, to have a serious effect on my own mental health. Um, I was like had anxiety quite quite often, quite a bit, and I know a lot of artists um, have that, and so it's something I've been working on, focusing on um, balancing. Which you know, I never you were talking about being excited to go work Monday morning. I always worked right through the weekend. I mean, I would work seven days a week all the time, and um, I mean, it, this is the first year I've taken weekends off. You know, and uh, it, it's difficult. People say, "Oh, you have to take weekends off. Take time for yourself. Go to the gym." Well, when you're an artist wanting to do this for a living, you find yourself working all the time, and it can quite overtake your life. Which is a good thing and a bad thing. Um, but you have to make sure to try to, you know, to to make sure that you're you're healthy and balance yourself as well, because it can get very. Um, overwhelming which is why the personal projects i think are important like the, the excalibur project is my is my sanity <laughs> so um but uh, just warning people that are getting into the industry that um you know to make sure that when it starts to to, to affect your health it, first of all a lot of artists have have difficulty managing um the, the amount of stress that it can put you under uh, so you're not alone so make sure to reach out and talk to other artists about it yeah so i was talking just today with with uh, my parents that um, when you do this uh, for a living or just trying to do that, maybe even more when you're trying, uh, you have to face a lot of uh, failure or rejection and you have to learn to, do, to deal with that. And it's not easy at the start, especially at the start. Maybe it's never easy, but then you, you learn to cope with that. And most of the time we learn that uh, if you fail you, you're screwed you, you will never make anything again and if you receive no you will never you could never contact the company again uh, but it's not true and it's something i i really want to say to everyone uh, it's that wants to, to do this even just for passion not only for a job but don't be afraid to to try it. just to ask uh, ask feedbacks or just send your things and if 
someone doesn't get back to you, it's okay. Send something else uh, maybe in a year when you feel more comfortable and you are not failing, you are not being judged for the person you are and your work uh, will keep growing every time, every day. And so if you don't get something, a job or something now, you will with time, you will. And if they don't get back to you, it's not necessarily because yeah. they didn't like your work. A lot of times they just yeah. pin it up on their wall. I've had people that are like, oh, I've had your work pinned on my wall for 10 years and they finally got a job where I can hire you. And I'm just like, 10 years? You've had my stuff pinned on your wall for 10 years? So, um, and they're like, yeah, I finally got, I've been waiting for the right job and I finally came along. I'm just like, 10 years? So um, so don't, don't think because they didn't respond that it's not because they didn't like your work. Just keep sending yes. it and keep promoting it. Okay, well, I think we're going to wrap up the panel uh, for the live stream. I want to thank everybody for attending and for taking the time to answer probably questions you've heard many times before and giving us all some insight into what happens, you know, behind the covers of D&D &D books and all of our favorite RPGs and uh, just you know, indulging all your fans and getting word out there that, you know, even in a day of pandemics, you know, we can still get together. Uh, I've run virtual games over Zoom quite a bit or over Skype, which takes me back to my 90s era when I had a group scattered all over North America. <laughs> and scheduling was beyond horrendous. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So thank you all. And thank you so much for uh, being part of the first CamCon artists panel. And hopefully it's the first of many. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for having I, us. Great. Thank you. My first you. panel. Ah. Yeah, and I know you've got James's uh, panel for the publishers uh, yeah. coming up. 3.30. So, yes, 3.30. So yeah, all right. Uh, I think that is everything. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing all your new projects coming out. Um, I will be checking uh, pretty much all of your sites regularly <laughs> now. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And hopefully you got some great insight from these people, these fine artists who have managed to, you know, live the dream uh, that most of us have had since we were having kids. You can do it. Keep on it. You can do it. You can be successful. It was great meeting all of you. And yes, definitely great meeting all of you. Yes. I'll follow you all on Instagram. <laughs> Me too. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you guys so much. And thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, we'll see you hopefully soon, <laughs> hopefully in person. Yeah.